Hashin is an active relationship between two parts. It's the strategies and objectives, and it is the daily management of key performance indicators. So there's some redundancy in what we talked about, continuous improvement in SQDCM. That's the daily operation, the weekly, monthly, the things that we do on a regular basis throughout the year. And these two components, Hashin, the strategies and objectives that are more long-term, that are more vision-related, combined with the daily goals, which are linked to it, really moves the organization in the right direction. So this is a, kind of a graphic of what that means. So if I've got out, out four years, I want to achieve this vision. Year one, I work daily, weekly, monthly. I'm always trying to solve problems with Kaizen and continuous improvement. But it is aligned with what this objective is. Our annual goals are aligned with this objective. So I'm working toward the vision, but I've got an annual requirement in how I get there year over year. So the idea is you're looking at improvement. If I didn't have the Hashin planning, take these improvements away as a company. So these are the steps. Does anybody have an idea what catch ball means? I remember I was at Chrysler and they said, we're doing catch ball in our plan. I don't think we were well executing some of these things, even though people were using the terms. We're doing catch ball. Well, that, what that means is if you look at establishing organization vision, developing breakthrough objectives, developing annual objectives, and then deploying them, those first four steps are all hashing. And the last three steps where you implement the objectives and you do your monthly and annual reviews are tied in. So the catch ball piece of this, the intent of this is that we're talking to all levels of the organization, from the president on down, and we're negotiating what we view as the vision or the requirements to support what the company's doing, even establishing the vision <coughs> from, from the manufacturing floor, in this case manufacturing, all the way to the president's office, and we're going back and forth on this until we all are consistently agreeing, this is who we think we should be in the next three to five years. And then you have this understanding and this vision that becomes stated for the company and everybody knows what it is. And then you start developing your breakthrough objectives and your annual objectives that are in line and consistent with that vision. So this is a well-developed process of defining how we do business as a company and what our goals are and who we want to be. Well-developed. So catch ball means, catch ball means I'm, I'm the president, I throw you the ball and I say, here's what we think about the vision, here's what we want to do. And you go, sounds good to me. And then I throw it to you and you go, eh, and you throw it back and say, I'm not sure, why weren't we considering this? I think this is important. Now that would be the next level of management. And you're going back and forth on what this vision should be. And then you're going down to the next level from you. And you're throwing it down saying, here's what I think our key breakthrough objectives should be. And your organization's throwing the ball back to you, trying to negotiate that around the vision. And that goes all the way down to the supervisor running the process on the floor in annual objectives. And that's a long, difficult process to go through. But when you go through it, you have very, very great clarity about who you are as an organization, what you want to be, and you've aligned everybody's efforts and work around that objective. That doesn't happen in a lot of companies. And it is very powerful. But at Chrysler, catch ball meant, you know, Chrysler catch ball meant they'd throw the ball at you really hard, and if you didn't catch it, it'd hit you in the teeth. <laughs> so you better catch it. <laughs> and then obviously the continuous improvement for the Kaizen efforts. So establishing organizational vision, it's a picture of the company in the future years. It sets a framework for strategic planning, and all stakeholders are involved. All stakeholders. Everybody that has something to do with it are aligned with this vision and help develop it. The vision statement defines your long-term aspirations. It explains why you're doing what you're doing and the ultimate good you want to achieve through your success. So Ali, should we have a vision for the lab? Yeah. W guess what? I'm a hypocrite. We do. We talk about, hey, you know, this would be a good place to go. And we kind of talk it out. But have we de defined anything? Have we put it on paper? Have we all agreed? Working We're working on it. <laughs> We're working on it. But we really should because th there's a place that that lab could go that we think could be great, but it'll never get there unless we define it. I, I mean, we'll just, we just won't do the work because we're good sheep and we're too busy. But if we define it and we all understand what we want it to be in five years, then we can start putting together the things that have to happen to, make, to get that done. And we can go to the department chair and say, hey, do you got a little budget for us? There are some things we want to do in our lab, and here's what they are. And then the department chair says, I think I can talk to the dean. I think we can get some funding to help do that. I like the plan. But until we put that all together and have a vision, we're never going to have the breakthrough results defined, and we're certainly not going to work throughout the year to try to achieve them. We're just going to do what we do, like a lot of companies. So in our lab, what do we want to do? We, we really want to have it on the web. We want it to go out to the world. We want everybody to look at it. What does that mean? It means we better have great stuff, right? Well, what's that mean? It means we've got to improve some of these things if we're going to put them online. Oh, what else do we want to do? We want people to self-certify. I'm lean certified out of Tiger Motors. Why? Because I, I watched all these lectures. I did all this. I looked at all the train modules. I took the time exam on the website, and I got my little certificate. And I'm over in smack dab Mississippi, and my company has no funding for a budget for training, but I trained myself. That would be great if we could do that. That'd take a lot of work. But we have to write it down, document it, and agree to it, and start deciding what has to happen to make it happen. Or we won't get better. That's Hashin planning. So I walked into uh, PowerTech. They feed uh, ancient Sakia. This was a year or so ago. I just walked in their front door. 
beautiful place. I mean, it, another manufacturing operation where you could eat off the floor. Uh, and this was on their wall, so I thought I'd take a picture of it. <clears throat> powertrain specialized company, global top powertrain specialized company by 2020. By 2015, we want to sell three and a half million units, and here's the breakthrough results that we have to have, that we have to work on. Now, would you guess that they have annual objectives that are developed off of all these throughout the organization that support that? So what if they didn't do this? Do you think anything would happen? Do you think the company would improve, really? They might. It'd be random, and you'd certainly have a lot of people working against each other. You wouldn't have consistency. You wouldn't have alignment. So here's their vision. And I would say these are their breakthrough results that they're trying to achieve. And of course, that gets cascaded. So you might be able to figure out who XYZ Motor vision statement is. I used to work for a place that made airplane motors. But So here's a vision. XYZ Motors aims to be the clear industry leader achieving 75% market share of general aviation piston engines by continually improving value, providing innovative defect-free design with fast, reliable delivery to our customers by 2018. Okay, well, that sounds great. How do we do that? Do we all agree that's what we want to do? Yeah, I think we can do that. Okay, we've got defined. <clears throat> So we have to develop breakthrough results. Here are the breakthrough results. No price increases over three years. The way this company typically operates is, hey, we need more money, raise price. That's not a way you can operate in a competitive environment, but they're not that competitive because they only have one other competitor and that other competitor is not that good. And that's like homing in Pennsylvania. So the way the industry works where they're making airplane engines is, wow, we need some more money, raise price. So they're slowly killing the golden goose. They're losing customers as an industry over time because they're starting to make it more and more prohibitive for people to have fun flying airplanes because there is no structure in place that drives improvement necessarily the way it should, being customer focused. Improve OEM failures by 50% over three years. It's easy to do. Develop a robust voice of the customer feedback system, tie it to the continuous improvement system. What's that saying? What are all these things saying right here? Focus on the customer. Focus on the customer. Improve order to delivery lead time by 75% over five years. Okay, so we have a five-year plan that our customers ought to be thrilled if we can achieve this. Now we gotta talk about, do we all agree Yes, we all agree. Uh, well, I think we should add this one to it. This is something that's a real problem for us. We should consider putting that in our vision. Or I'm not sure about this one. I don't think we can achieve, I don't think we can achieve 75% over five years. Can we make that 60? I think we can achieve 60. So you're negotiating this vision and these breakthrough objectives. So develop annual objectives. Value stream map all business units. There's 10 of them. Implement pull production in two areas with 50% improvement in lead time. They've done that, crankcase. We're supposed to do it with cylinders. Don't think they've done that yet. They're losing my influence, I think. I think they need me there. Benchmark best practices, voice of the customer feedback systems. What does that mean? That means go out to the world and see who else does a good job of this. Because we don't think that we're getting great information about the engines we produce or the quality of the engines or the problems customers are having. We have, we have a system for it, but I'm guessing it's not that effective and we should probably find out who does this well. Design and implement voice of the customer system. Link continuous improvement to the voice of the customer with responsibility and port, report out. In other words, when we're getting response back from the customer, we have a system that forces us to take action based upon what we're hearing. And it's, de it's designed in our system and how we operate, and it's a, it's a requirement. So we are linked to the customer. Improve current SQDCM metrics by 10% from 2013 base. So SQDCM, if you remember, those are our metrics that we run by, safety, quality, delivery, cost, morale. By the way, this is interesting. The company we were at yesterday, Brosa, they have quality delivery, cost, and morale. I'm sure they do safety. They probably manage it in a separate area, but if you go to all their boards, they have quality delivery, cost, and they don't call it morale, they call it people. And they do a, they do a every two year survey to see how happy their organization is. So I was pretty impressed that they do that. So we know what our metrics are, we know what our appraisals are, we know what our trends are, we know what our targets are, 10% improvement, and let's manage every day to achieve these results on the floor. Replace key cost metric with inventory terms and lead time measure. So if we really want to improve lead time and want to be customer responsive, if we use inventory terms as a primary metric and lead time reduction as a primary metric, everyone's working towards that. Whip reduction, quality improvement, because you can't have whip reduction if you don't have stable process. So it drives great behavior. Investigate carbon fiber and carbon nanomaterials for lightweight design. These are airplane engines, so they're always trying to save a pound. So they should look at new technologies and see if there's an opportunity to design a part that lightens the weight of the engine. Implement design improvements to aid assembly, throughput, and quality. Those are our annual objectives. Uh, and Kaizen, implement, and this was a board at Continental, safety, quality, delivery, cost, morale. Notice that in every position, you see the number, one, five, nine, 10. It's a map. It's a map that tells them this is the document 
that goes in this position on the 10 boards in the manufacturing area, and they're going to look exactly alike. And in case you don't know where to get it, it's on the shared drive in this location. And this needs to be updated by the first Tuesday of every month. And then we're going to review our continuous improvement boards, and we're going to make sure that all the data is relevant and current in every location. And these are SQDCM metrics. And when we meet at the board to talk about continuous improvement, that people, what they need to make their area run better, we have this right next to it, and we can look at it and talk about it, if we need to. But we've got to be careful. We don't want the data to drive behavior in terms of what they need for improvement. But we certainly want to be aware of how things are, are running. We don't want to say, hey, use your continuous improvement board and give me an action item for that. We don't want to say that because we're taking the authority away from the process and we're forcing them to respond the way we want them to. But if we give them freedom, we should see improvement in the data. Because remember, small Kaizen almost never relates to the data because it's small. 10,000 fixes have a huge impact on the data. One doesn't relate. It's really a crazy idea to believe that an initiative is going to affect the data, a little initiative, a small improvement, something someone needs in their, on their workstation is going to affect the data. Very difficult to relate. About as difficult as saying, I think, cutting the corner off the table is worth 50 bucks. You can't relate it. So the, so the metrics are there that we're operating by. We know what the targets are. We know what the issues are. And we've got continuous improvement that we're working on a regular basis in the areas. And all of these targets around this data are all determined based upon the vision of the company and the, and, and the key initiatives that we have as a company to meet our vision. This is the annual work we're doing to support the three to five year improvement. And I think I showed you this before. This was our schedule. So we met at every continuous improvement board twice a month in two different areas, two different directors with all their products that they're producing. And this was our schedule. And everyone who had an issue on that board and myself had to be standing in, at that board at noon on that day talking about those issues and how we're helping support the floor and fixing problems. Solving the problems that the people that are working the process are telling us they need because we work for them. They don't work for us. We work for them. And, and they are not people. Here, keep, get this in, in, try to get this image in your head because people get kind of screwed up with uh, the lower level guy is trying to tell me what I'm supposed to do and I'm an engineer. I, should, I know better than that. What do they know? Don't take the person out of it completely and just think of it as the process is talking to you through that continuous improvement board. They're just interpreters. They just hear it and you don't because they're intimately familiar with it. When you go into this comp we're at Brogia, 600 people in there, extremely complex. I mean, you can't walk through and even have an idea of what they're doing. Nobody knows the details of what's going on in that system except the people with intimate knowledge. They're the people with the stethoscope, and they've got their stethoscope on the process. So when the process speaks and says, support me, we all work for the process. They're just interpreters. Hopefully interpreters you can trust. So this is what it looked like there. So we had our data, we had our SQDCM metrics, and we had our problem-solving board, and we understood that we had areas where we're behind in our initiatives. We know who it is that is supposed to work that, and they must be there because that's part of the way the system works, and we work these issues every day throughout the year, trying to solve these problems to help support process improve. Very well-structured system. So as a leader, you're there to help and fix and support people and teach and teach the system. Now imagine, just think for a minute, if you walked into a company that didn't have well-developed systems. You'd be kind of lost. You, you really wouldn't know where to go. You wouldn't know how to manage. You'd have to just randomly try to figure out how to manage a place. Because there's no structure in place, there's no rules in place, there's no system in place. There's no vision that you're linked to. You don't even know what it is the company wants to be. That, that is difficult to be successful in a company like that. And by the way, that's half the companies or more. More. I hate to say more, but I think it's more. Probably more like 80% of the companies. <laughs> So th that's good news, though, for you. If you know that 80% of the companies you walk in don't have these systems, that's kind of good, isn't it? I mean, because if you understand what it is and you can have an impact on that, that's great. If you're going into companies and they've got it all figured out for you, then you can't be special. you just got to learn to operate in the system. But you can go out there and be special because they need your help badly. Ali, you have some experience with companies, right? Several. How, how are they? Are they, they pretty good? <laughs> you shake your head, don't you? Right? They're accidentally making money. It's hard to believe. But it's true. Okay, so that theoretically drives this, <clears throat> but it does. It probably I should change this graphic. This validates that we're doing the right thing. This doesn't tell you what to do. Is there any questions about that? Because that's an unusual point of view, kind of, and you probably won't hear that very often. I mean, if you think about it, Broja is not doing this. Broja is saying, hey, look, uh, hey, you need something on here for that. That's what Broja is doing. And I say, oh, no, 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 don't do that. Don't respond to the data. <laughs> that's crazy to say. It sounds crazy. That doesn't mean that people aren't working on these things in other ways. But, 
but you don't want to take the process authority away and, and tell them they're not allowed to tell you what they need. Again, if you remember Sterling Heights Assembly, Sterling Heights Assembly, um, 50 years in business, no perfect build. No perfect build at Carvery 51 seconds for eight straight hours. Three years into this process, perfect build. Uh, Bob leading it. <laughs> uh, that had something to do with it. But if it's structured and defined, anyone can do this. So why could I point to any initiative of the, of the 8,950? 8, could I point to one of those and say, that one out of 8,950 made this improve? Never. Almost never. Because essentially we're just clearing all of the obstacles that obstruct the flow of quality product away. Small details. Thousands of small details. If I said to that organization that had the perfect build in the assembly plant, we're not going to recognize anything you say unless you tell me how it's fixing a bar. We wouldn't have done anything. So don't hijack the authority of the process to get whatever it needs by forcing it to respond to a data point. Just validate that they're, we're improving. You can also ask, hey, is there somebody in engineering working on this hot problem in this area? Do we have a project on that? Do we have something we're trying to improve here? Yeah, yeah, Larry's working on it. Hey, maybe you can come out here next week and we can talk about that. But we're not taking away authority from the process. And then you saw this in the continuous improvement slides. You see the cascading of requirements. My scrap results are a summation of the two directors' scrap results. And uh, so it's cascaded goals, right? So these really are supporting our overall vision through our annual objectives, and it's cascaded down through the organization. And both of those directors, both of those directors have many business unit leaders, and all of their metrics roll up into their target. And all of this is aligned to the goal of the company and the vision three to five years out. Does it look like this takes a lot of work to set up a system like this? Yes. It's really, it really takes a lot of work putting this infrastructure, defining the operating requirements and how we work this system, and then enforcing and leading and teaching these requirements it takes a lot of work and a lot of effort. But you put this in place and you're kind of on autopilot. You got a system that takes you there. We had a five year target to implement all this deployment. Yeah, where, where, where were you? In India. What's? It's an automotive supply company, so mm. we're trying for the Deming Award, and this is a necessity. So this is uh. like a five year plan to implement this. Oh, oh, you had a five-year plan to try to put the structure in place. So what you're saying is, yes, this is hard to do. It's hard to put the infrastructure in place, which is probably why a lot of companies don't have it. Well, one, they may not understand it. You do now, so you can't say you don't understand it. And also say it's harder to manage a company without it. Oh, it, you're just randomly you know, floating through time and hoping for the best, <laughs> which won't be the best. Uh, so let's get to your questions. And there's the annual results for the organization. Uh, here's your quiz. <laughs> 